now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo, a black Rolls Royce stood outside an imposing-looking building near Whitehall in London. Inside the building was a long corridor with rows of offices on either side. Each door had the title of the area of England printed upon it. Southwest Division, Southeast Division, Midlands, etc. At the end of the corridor was an office marked Coordination and Control. Two tough-looking guards stood on either side of the door. They gazed impassively ahead. Further down the corridor, there was a young woman in char lady's clothes. She was on her hands and knees, scrubbing away at the floor. She looked up and murmured, It won't be long now. The Avengers. and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Once an OMO user, always an OMO user. This is what Mrs. Lyons of Yellowwood Park, Durban, has to say. It is the one party that does everything. Well, for me, I know that. Yes? There's so many things that I've, I've used and experimented with just to prove cold water Omo, really to put it to the ultimate test, you know, and I find that it's, well, it's come up to all my expectations. Yes. Cold water Omo cleans best. International fashion models like Jan Bishop care for their complexion with Lux Beauty Soap. I know of no other beauty soap that could care for my complexion as well as Lux. Lux, a beauty treatment as you bathe. in which Mother, as usual, hands a case over to John Seed, who thinks it's very serious, and Emma Peel thinks it's a case of... Love all. The office of the Missile Redeployment Ministry was luxuriously furnished. Thick curtains covered the windows. Around an oval table, several distinguished-looking men were seated. On his feet at the head of the table, Sir Rodney Kellogg, a dapper, white-haired man, was addressing the meeting. He had about him an air of quiet respectability, and he was obviously in a position of higher authority than the others. In front of him lay a book bearing the notice, Read, Digest, and Pass On. And finally, may I impress upon you that this is a matter of utmost secrecy. The Royal Commission's report must on no account be discussed outside these walls. Each of you will read it in turn and pass it on to the man whose name is next on the list. When you're all thoroughly acquainted with its contents, we will meet again to put its recommendations into effect. Uh, that's all, gentlemen. Uh, good evening to you all. <laughs> the men left, and Sir Rodney moved over to the guards at the door. Uh, thank you. You needn't wait any longer. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, thank you. The guards walked smartly down the corridor and through the double doors. Immediately, the char lady picked up her bucket and walked down the corridor. She walked boldly through the door and closed it behind her. The moment Sir Rodney heard the sound of the bucket, he swung round, his face suffused with delight and anticipation. Mother, darling. Oh, Dad, oh, my sweet oh, I, I'm so sorry the meeting took so long. Oh, it doesn't matter, darling, so long as you're here. Oh, you are lovely. What did you talk about at the meeting? Uh, oh, uh, routine stuff, mostly. Uh, all very dull, I'm afraid. Oh, tell me about it, please. No, no not now. We've, uh, <laughs> we've more important things. No. I want to hear about the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> my little secrets are so boring to you, my love. It wouldn't possibly interest a lovely girl like you. Oh, but you're quite wrong, Rogers, darling. I'm interested in everything you do. Everything about you. 
especially a secret. <laughs> oh, you are going to tell me everything, aren't you, darling? John Steed thought the morning rather cold, but quite bracing. He walked rather jauntily down the street, swinging his umbrella and raising his bowler to the odd acquaintance. At a sign reading, Danger, Men at Work, Steed raised an eyebrow, turned off into the cordoned area, and reached Mother's headquarters. Hello, Mother. That sign outside is a bit misleading, isn't it? Mother, in his wheelchair, was playing table tennis with Mrs. Peel. I had to get some form of exercise. Ah. My game, I think, Mrs. Peel. Uh, what's the problem? Well, that's what I'm waiting to hear. You know what a sticky wicket is, don't you? A difficult one. Uh, that's what we're batting on at the moment. Why? Uh, there's a security leak at the ministry. Hmm? Which department? Yes, I read deployment. That's impossible. All the personnel have a top QR security rating. I know, I know, I know. But the evidence is overwhelming. A glass of white wine, Steve, Mr. Beale. Oh, no, thanks, Mother. Good early me. Never too early for a white wine. Red, yes. White, never. As I say, there is a leak, all right. The other side seems to know each move we make almost before we make it. Any suspects? Yes. Who? Every man in the department had more under surveillance for two months. <clears throat> ah, that's better. Not worth playing, Mrs. Peel. Have you checked all their contacts? With a microscope. Oh, perfectly legitimate. No leads there. Who's in charge over there? Sir Rodney Kellogg. You want me to go over there? No, let Steve go. We'll have another game. And uh, do try to give me a little competition this time, Mrs. Peel. <laughs> Rodney Kellogg was sitting at his desk. Martha, the charlady, was sitting on his lap. So, uh, that's the situation, my angel. Mm. The report proposed a streamlining of the divisional areas and an overhaul of the entire national security system. Oh, I see. Yeah, so why you should bother your pretty little head with such tedious stuff is beyond me. Oh, but Rodney, darling, I find it fascinating. And uh, there's one thing, though, that's not quite clear. Mm, uh, what's that, my love? Mm, well, what happens to the Pearl Beach base after the reorganization? Oh, it'll be used as a decoy. Uh, the new center of the East Anglian complex will be... That's enough, Sir Rodney. The curtains parted and Metcalf, a tough-looking young man, entered suddenly. Who, who the devil are you? Metcalf, security. I thought something like this was going on. I must ask you both to accompany me to headquarters. Oh, Rodney, darling, it's all my fault. I'm so sorry. No, no, my dearest. It, uh, it was I who was foolish. You mustn't blame yourself. Oh, but I do. I got you into this mess, and it's my responsibility to get you out. Oh, Rogers, hold me just once more. Martha placed herself close to Sir Rodney, looking up beseechingly into his eyes, and slipped a pearl-handled revolver from under her overalls. She pointed it at Metcalf. Has to be done, my darling. Has to be done. When John Steed arrived at the ministry and walked up the steps towards Sir Rodney's office, he heard three shots from down the corridor. He broke into a run and burst into Sir Rodney's office at speed. Sir Rodney was standing, gun in hand, staring down at Metcalf's dead body. Give me that gun, Sir Rodney. <clears throat> Seems to even shoot in triplicate. What's it all about? I, I found him in here, going through my papers. Uh, there was a struggle. Uh... And you shot him? Yes. Without giving him a chance to explain? Well, I, I, I've been drinking. I, I wasn't thinking very clearly. I take it you have a permit for this gun? Oh, yes, 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 of course. Uh, Where'd you get it? Uh, it belonged to my father. A small pistol with a pearl handle. Well, maybe my mother. I, I can't remember. Steed looked at Sir Rodney and, without a word, broke open the gun, removing the remaining bullets. <sighs> Here. Loaded. Hmm. I said loaded. Go on. Uh, yes, uh, Yes, uh, it must be jammed. Why are you looking at me like that? Are you implying that I don't know how to load my own gun? I'm implying that you're covering up for someone. Somebody who gave you this gun and told you to confess to a murder you didn't commit. Oh, that's absurd. Why should I want to ruin a ruin a successful career? I, I, I... Sir Rodney stopped in mid-sentence. His eyes settled on the charwoman's bucket standing in the corner. A silly smile touched his lips, and his expression became 
Hideous word, but nonetheless the correct one. Gooey. Something the matter, Sir Rodney? Hmm? Uh, uh, what? Uh, oh, uh, sorry. Uh, I'm not myself today. Uh, what was I saying? Never mind. I'm putting you under house arrest pending a full investigation. You'll be confined to this office till further notice. Oh, one last question, Sir Rodney. Are you aware that there's a security leak from this department? <laughs> What did he reply to that question? He... Nothing. He looked at me as I was talking Mongolian. And were you? <clears throat> no, but I do quite well, actually. Shut, Mrs. Peel. <clears throat> so you don't think he knew who Metcalf was? I don't think he knew who anyone was. He was too busy thinking of something else. Any idea of what? No. He seemed to spend the entire interview in a kind of trance. He kept staring into space with an idiotic smile on his face. Uh, could be drink, of course. Some people do overindulge. Could be drugs. Could be love. Mm, it sounds as though it's being got at. Intimidation? Blackmail? Infatuation? I must ask you to curb your natural frivolity, Mrs. Peel. This case could have serious consequences. The idea of a respectable man like Sir Rodney losing his head at a woman is too ludicrous for words. But love is ludicrous, Mother. When a man's in love with a woman, she can make him do anything. Don't you agree, Steve? <clears throat> uh, may I take that up with you later, Mrs. Peel? Meanwhile, anyone for table tennis? a new way to fight tooth decay for Keeps. New fluoride for Keeps toothpaste. It's the clear blue way to fight tooth decay, and it's the best anti-decay toothpaste around. New great tasting for Keeps toothpaste. The clear blue way to fight tooth decay for Keeps. New family fluoride for Keeps toothpaste. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. So many housewives, like Mrs. Adenall, say. I wash every single thing in cold water anode. Anything that's washable come out. What was it clean? Yes, Omo cleans best. The Avengers. every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo. Cold Water Omo.